welcome to this review of my Siemens PC1632 keyboard. Yeah, yeah, ha ha, Siemen. This keyboard was a donation from the same person who also donated the AAK. Thanks again, May. It's uh, quite a beast, as you can see. It's basically Siemens's version of a battleship. And yes, that's battleship, not battle cruiser. That's how big this thing is. To clarify, for the newer viewers among you, a battleship is a keyboard along the size of this, the IBM Model F122 key terminal keyboard. Something between the size of this and a normal full size is generally referred to as a battle cruiser, such as this Focus FK5001. Both make a standard keyboard look like small fry, really. The Siemens is almost exactly the same width as the IBM, 55.6 centimeters or in Imperial units. <laughs> so, quite impressive really. It's quite a bit lighter, less than half the IBM's weight actually, at 1.7 kilos, but that's still nothing to shake a stick at. It doesn't have the typical bank of 24 F keys at the top like most battleships do, but it does have enormous bezels, especially at the top, so it's still fucking huge. It's only got 10 F keys actually, although it does use the same cross nav that the IBM has. This keyboard turned out to be quite a bit different from what I thought it would be. It's a pretty interesting specimen actually, so let me show you this thing in some more detail. Siemens is a for native English speakers rather silly sounding German company, although it's actually a very very large engineering firm and pretty well known in Europe. They were originally a telegraphy company but have hugely diversified over the years. Turns out they have a long history of making keyboards too, although they don't do it themselves anymore nowadays. Part of their history is tainted with war profiteering unfortunately, including from a forced labour factory in the Auschwitz death camp. Later partnerships included ones with Fujitsu, with whom they made a very large amount of terrible rubber dome keyboards, and Nixdorf, which they purchased, and with whom they made a green badge version of the Nixdorf nuclear launch keyboard, which I reviewed years ago. Like other large companies who ventured into making computers, such as IBM, they developed their own key switches way back in the late 70s. They're these STB11 switches, which were superseded by these STB21 in the 1980s. Both of these were all tactile-only contact-based switches with a square post mount. To my surprise, however, this keyboard uses neither STB11 nor STB21. Instead, it's a type of cross-mount linear foam and foil switch. It slightly resembles BTC foam and foil, which might have come to mind for some of you, but it's not that. Instead, it very much appears to be the same switches that I reviewed almost two years ago in this Franklin FKB3, which was a rebrand of a Multitech keyboard and one of the most kick-ass looking vintage keyboards I own, in my opinion at least. Multitech is the original name of Acer Incorporated, by the way. The ones in the Franklin are green and have painted springs, and the PCBs are different, but other than that, they very much appear to be the same switch. Now, of course, you might be wondering now whether it's Multitech foam and foil and they made this Siemens, or whether it's Siemens foam and foil and they made this Franklin. The PCB itself doesn't have any identifying markings, unfortunately, but what made me write Multitech in the title of the video was that both boards were made in Taiwan, and of course, Acer is a Taiwanese company, while Siemens is from Deutschland. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it was Multitech that made them both. The key feels pretty bad. Like the Franklin, it's a linear switch with a scratchy travel, which is bad enough, but much more so than on the Franklin even, it binds a lot. So off-center key presses easily get stuck. This is exactly the sort of stuff why people hate foam and foil switches, even though in theory they have a lot to offer, such as a long lifetime, high reliability, and inherent in-key rollover. Now, Siemens did lay off its keyboard manufacturing at some point, again, just like IBM, but this one is from 1988, which seems a bit early, as Siemens were still making STB keyboards into the 90s. So I'm not really sure what the precise story behind this model is, but it seems to be a weird one. This is the only model of Siemens keyboard I could find that has these switches too, and even on models of other brands, this is a pretty uncommon switch type. 
Interestingly, it uses a 5-pin DIN plug, exactly like the ones used on old ATXT keyboards, and it's just the right age for that sort of thing too, but it doesn't work over my Saurus converter, and another report I've read on this keyboard indicates they couldn't get it to work either, so I don't think it's a malfunction or anything. I'm guessing it just uses a slightly different protocol, or maybe it engages the reset line or something, which renders commercial Saurus ineffective. The build quality is pretty decent, the case is just plastic, and it's got some pretty annoying plastic clips to fasten it together, but it's backed up by a bunch of screws as well, in case the clips fail, and it uses a pretty hefty steel mounting plate to hold the switches, and a relatively thick grounding plate too. Not bad. It's got a pretty good cable too, it's still nice and slick and not sticky like some of those cables that the plasticizers inside went to town on. There's flip out feet too, but they're kind of stiff and they make this hideous noise when you try to flip them in or out. Also, there's a speaker grill here, but no speaker appears to be present on the PCB. And here is the model sticker of the keyboard, it just says Tastator PC 1632 plus a Bestellnummer an F Nummer and a Fritz Nummer as well as the sticker below that identifies it was made in Taiwan, Republic of China. The keycaps are really nice, they're thin but they are PBT and the lettering isn't just die sub, it's double die sub on quite a few of them. The original German Quartz layout is indicated in black, but an international QWERTY layout is overlaid on top of it in dark blue, which looks kick-ass. This includes the symbol keys, such as the apostrophe keys, the square brackets and semicolon, which are overlaid over some German letter keys. Some of the keys are orange or green too, and all of them are Siemens's trademark keycaps with their round tops with spherical indentations. By the way, they're MX compatible as well, so you can use them on modern keyboards that support the layout. Speaking of which, the layout is an absolutely bizarre combination of elements from keyboards of the time. It's got the cross-shaped nav of a 122 key terminal keyboard, the F keys on the left like an XT keyboard, as well as control here and caps lock here, escape on the numpad like on an AT keyboard, even though it's also got an escape key on the number row like on an XT keyboard, an ANSI enter like on a Model M, but a blocker above it and a single unit backspace like on an Asian big ass enter keyboard, except without the big ass enter. They even split the right shift with a blocker for no apparent reason. So overall, I'd call it a wasteful ANSI keyboard with crap switches, but good build quality and pretty cool keycaps. I think that might suit a modern build quite well, as they look much more authentically vintage than those fake typewriter like circular keycaps. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard. Achtung, Spitfire!